Hey guys. So today we're going to be doing a little something just a little bit different about our turkey for Thanksgiving. It's not your traditional way of cooking your turkey, but I think y'all really gonna like this. It does, um, it does help a lot on the day of Thanksgiving to have all this ready and uh, you're gonna be putting out a really delicious turkey that everybody's gonna love. And plus, it's only gonna take an hour and a half to cook this turkey. And I know you're thinking, Miss Lori, how in the world are you going to cook a turkey an hour and a half? Now, <clears throat> I only got a 12-pound turkey for us. And I know a lot of y'all going to be buying, like, you know, bigger turkeys than that. I used to, too. But anymore, a turkey's not one of our our biggest, um, you know, it's kind of like a side dish to us. It's not our favorite. The ham is the star on our table. But uh, we do have to have turkey, though, because it's just traditional. And I know y'all think, now, Miss Lori, you got to have that big old turkey in the roaster coming out of the oven and sitting on the table and daddy or grandpa doing the carving. But, you know, sometimes you just have to do things to make it easier on yourself. Because Thanksgiving Day, to me, is about spending it with your family and eating a lot of good food. So <laughs> you don't want to wear yourself out. But besides that, this... This way of cooking your turkey, it's just going to make every piece of that turkey come out juicy on the inside, and the skin's going to be really crispy. So what we're going to do, and I know y'all think I'm crazy, is we're going to cut this turkey up just like you would a chicken, a fried chicken. Now, if you don't want to do it, have your butcher do it for you. We're going to cut it up in pieces. We're going to brine it anywhere from 12 to 24 hours so you can get all this done ahead of time. That way, when you do stick it in the oven, that's all you have to do is just stick it in the oven, and it'll be done an hour, an hour and a half. Now, what it is is you've got your different pieces on your bird. And people, <clears throat> when you're cooking your turkey, your breast gets too dry because it's overcooked before you get the dark meat around the bone, say like the thigh, before all that's done. So if some of your turkey meat's overdone to get the other part done. And uh, so this is just, it just makes sense to me to do it this way. So that's the way we're gonna do it and I'm gonna show you how. So y'all stick around and Miss Lori's gonna show you how to cook a good turkey in an hour, an hour and a half. It's gonna be good. Okay, I want to show y'all out of that 12 pound turkey. I want to show you what I've got to work with. I've got the back and I've got the neck and I've got the gizzards. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put these in the slow cooker and I'm gonna make me a, a big cooker full of broth. And this broth is gonna be used to make my gravy and it, I'll have broth for my dressing. I'll also use, uh, even after cooking these in the slow cooker, I'll still brown them up in a in a pot and make me some, some good giblet gravy. So, then over here, now this is a 12 pound turkey y'all, so a lot of y'all buy a bigger turkey. <clears throat> but of course I got two legs and two thighs and uh, Danny and I, we just love the wings. We love chicken wings, and uh, we're not big turkey eaters. I, I'm just going to tell you that right off the bat, but these are our favorite pieces right here. And of course, I got the two breasts, which uh, most of my kids, they're white meat eaters. So, And then the little ones, I got, of course, these big old turkey legs and the thighs. And whatever don't get ate, that's fine. Um, I can do a lot with it, but I didn't want to buy no bigger than a 12 pound turkey because we're going to have a big ham and you know we're going to have so many sides that we're going to have plenty of food so let's get started on our thanksgiving turkey i'm going to show you how we're going to 
um, put it in Italian dressing, let it brine for hmm, 12 hours or so. And then I'm going to show you how you can get this turkey done in an hour and a half, if not less. So this is a, an easy way. You can prep it all ahead of time to get that turkey in the oven and it not take four and a half hours to cook. It don't, it's not going to take up the whole oven. And you can even do it the day before if you want to. But this turkey is going to be juicy. It's not the breasts are not going to be dry and they're going to be crispy on the outside the most important thing is they'll be done in an hour and a half so let's get started okay I've got my my back and my neck my gizzard I've got a carrot and some onions in here in my slow cooker I'll go ahead and pour some water in I would normally put celery in here, but I don't have any. I do have, uh, I don't even have any dried celery at this point. That's full enough. Let's see, I've got some poultry seasoning. I'm just going to add probably, I don't know, a tablespoon. Maybe not quite a tablespoon, but more than a teaspoon. Um, it's just all by your own taste. I'm going to put a half a teaspoon or probably, that might be a whole teaspoon at a time. I'm going to put me some rosemary in here. I'm just going to put a half of a teaspoon of rosemary. And I'm going to put me some butter. It's going to make that broth really rich. You've got about half a stick. You can put in as much as you want. Put me some pepper and some salt. I'm going to put too much. Now I'm just going to put the lid on this and I'm going to put this on to cook for about, I don't know, eight hours. And my broth will be done and it'll all be good. So let's get started on the, chi the turkey. I keep wanting to say chicken. Let's get started on the turkey. We're going to get it in its brine and put it in the refrigerator and you can brine it for 12 to 24 hours okay we're going to get our turkey in our brine and <clears throat> you can use any brand name of italian dressing you want the main ingredients is going to be oil and vinegar and all your different seasonings now i'm going to pour two bottles I got these at the dollar store, and uh, they were a dollar and a quarter a piece, so I don't have too much money in the brine then. And then I'm going to take my turkey pieces. Now, you could put these one in big Ziploc bags, too. I just like doing it this way. Now, it's time. I will go through this, and uh, I will turn them over after they have set, you know, long enough on one side. I'll... I'll go into the fridge and I'll kindly move them around and turn them over. But I'm going to put them skin side down first. I don't know if I can get them all in here, but I'm going to. I tell you, this Italian dressing, it is some of the best stuff to marinate with. And you can make it homemade, but I've, I've talked about this before, and I do make all my dressings homemade but when you're doing a brine like this it takes a lot of olive oil and you know when you go and use a whole bottle of olive oil you've got a lot of money in that brine so to me you're just better off to buy the Italian dressing already made up well I'm a little short on space, but I'm going to get them in there. And like I said, I'll go in there and I'm going to turn them 
at least one time after sitting this way in the brine. Now I'm gonna get my plastic wrap out. First I'm gonna wash my hands. I'm gonna get my plastic wrap out. I'm gonna wrap this up before I put it in the fridge. Okay, we got a turkey. It's ready to go in the fridge. So I'm gonna put it in the bottom of the fridge. When you put any kind of raw meat in the refrigerator, you wanna always put it on the very bottom shelf so it don't contaminate anything underneath it. So we're gonna put it in there for 12 hours. Uh, probably be a little bit more than that. It can go up to 24 hours. You don't want to go any more than 24 hours though. And it's going to be really tender and juicy. Okay guys, our turkey's been marinating for, well it's been over 12 hours. And uh, I went in there after so many hours and I turned them over to make sure they were marinating on both sides. I discarded the marinade and I rinsed my chicken off. Because I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put my own seasoning on there. Uh, I got about a uh, stick of butter and I've got it melted. All I'm going to use is salt and pepper, butter, some thyme, and I've got some rosemary that uh, I've had drying out from my garden. So we're going to start with the butter. I'm going to stir that just a little bit. Now, the one thing you want, you're going to get pan juices, of course, in here. But if, if you have them racks that you can put inside your cookie sheet here, what I've done is I put foil and I put olive oil down so they wouldn't stick bad. And if you've got one of those uh, grates that you can put up here and then put your turkey on that. Well, the drippings will go down underneath that. Um, I don't have those, so I'm just going to put mine directly on my cookie sheet on top of the foil. And in the first one, I'm going to put my turkey legs and my thighs because they're going to take the longest to cook. And then I put my breast and my wings over here in this one. And I'll be checking them after an hour. I want 165 degrees. And, um, you know, the breasts may get done uh, before the thighs, usually. The wings may get done before the breast. So, that's how, you know, what I was talking about earlier is each part of your chicken or your turkey or your chicken it just, one one part's going to get done before the other. So the part that gets done before the other is going to be cooked too long. And a lot of people have a lot of trouble with like a dry breast. So this way, it kind of takes care of that issue. And another thing is, if you're the one that's having to bring the turkey, and you got to travel with it, this is going to be easier for you to travel with. So what I'm going to do, my hands are clean. I'm only going to use this one too. I'm going to put, I'm just going to rub some butter underneath the skin on that breast. I'm going to get it all over it. Now, a lot of people use oil or olive oil to rub on top of their turkey. And from what I researched, you're going to get, for one thing, we know butter makes everything taste better. But your butter is going to make for a crispier skin. So we're just going to rub this turkey down. I'm going to go underneath the skin with this butter. All you got to do is bring up that skin, and put your finger in there. Now I've got this other hand working on it. That's okay. And I like working with melted butter. It just seems to, I can spread it around a lot easier and it's not such a mess. I'm going to do the same for my wings. And I can tell you the wings are my favorite. So I will enjoy the wings. Now, if you don't want to use butter, 
you can go ahead and use uh, your olive oil. I just prefer it. So just make sure it's all. Now my oven is preheating at 420, 425. So I think that's good. Now I'm going to turn around here and I'm going to wash my hands real quick. Of course, I've got my towel scarf on, and I'm telling you, I've had this thing on most of half the day when I've been in here in the house cleaning and, and doing. They're so handy. Okay, we got the butter on there. Now, I want to show y'all, too, I've got quite a bit of broth from putting that turkey back in the neck and the gizzard in my slow cooker. And I cooked it all night. And then I even put it on an extra eight hours the next day. So it's really been cooking low and slow. And I got some really good uh, turkey stock here. So I've got some thyme. And I'm just going to lift up the skin. And I'm just going to sprinkle some thyme under here. Now when you're working with turkey, chicken, any kind of fowl, we all know we had to be very careful. So, that's why I put all of my spices in a bowl because whatever I don't use will be discarded. I don't want to use my, my salt container and contaminate all my salt. And I'm just going to kind of... You know, you don't want to do too excessive with your thyme because it can be a little bit too much. Plus, I've put thyme in my, my broth and all that, so my broth will be used in my dressing and all that. So you just don't want too much. So I've used all that I had in here. I'm going to put a little pepper. I get that skin back a little bit. You know, when I'm working with poultry, it just I feel like I can't get stuff <laughs> clean enough after I've after I've messed with it. And I'm gonna make sure that my skin is pulled back once I get all my seasoning on there. Because I love the skin, the crispy skin on a baked turkey or chicken. I seen a deal, I guess it was on social media, that KFC was going to start selling boxes of uh, chicken, fried chicken skin. And at first I was like, oh my goodness, are you kidding me? Because I absolutely love the crispy skin uh, fried up off the chicken. And we know, you know, it's not the best thing for you to eat. So after I got over being excited, I was thinking, Lori, you don't need them chicken skins, but do you know how good that'd be? Just a whole little box of nothing but the fried, crispy chicken skin, yum. Okay, we've got our turkey seasoned up. I'm gonna put it in a 425 oven. And I'm not even going to check it till about an hour. And I'm going to temp it. And if my breast or my wings or anything's done before these, I'll go ahead and take them out. And then if my thigh and my legs need another 30 minutes, then I'll leave them in there. But I don't think we're going to go more than an hour and 30 minutes on our turkey. So let's get it in the oven and uh, we'll be back when they're done. I almost forgot about my rosemary and I'm not I'm just gonna kind of stick it around I'm not even gonna put it on top I just want that that aroma from the rosemary to get you know onto the turkey because I've had people bite into a piece of turkey and find that 
which it wouldn't bother me, but you find that rosemary leaf and they're like, what is this? And I'm like, that's good stuff. But anyways, I'm just going to stick it around there. Now I'm going to get it in the oven. So we'll be back. We're going to plate up this, these turkey pieces on my $3 flea market Thanksgiving plate here. And I want y'all to look at how crispy the skin is on this turkey. Now maybe you're the kind of person that don't like crispy skin, so um, you can cover it with foil if you don't want your skin to be that crispy. And I've done tempted everything. The tin was around 177. In fact, when I tempt the uh, the thighs, they were getting on up there in 185. So it's really something to me how my dark meat got done around the same time as my white meat. But it just worked out that way. Now this, these turkey wings are sticking to the foil. So you really got to pull on them, but they're going to come off. And I'm so excited about these turkey wings. They are crispy and tender on the inside and stuck to the foil. Good grief there. So Danny's really going to love these chicken wings too. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cover I'm going to cover them with some foil and I'm just going to let them sit a little bit, a little bit before I cut my breast meat up. But y'all can see how crispy and brown and good this turkey's going to be. And like I said, if you don't like it this crispy, just cover it with foil. But this was at 425 degrees, and I just couldn't believe that it only took 54 minutes. Now this is a small turkey. I'm going to take some of these pan juices. I'm going to pour it over. I'm not going to waste it. Pour it over this turkey. And I could have used it in my gravy, but I'm going to pour it over my meat. I cut the breast meat off the the bone and I'm going to cut it in slices against the grain and this turkey, the breast is so juicy, it's unreal. So I'm just going to get it cut up, get it on the platter and this is the way I would present my, my my platter of turkey meat. I would cut up both breasts like this in slices. So that's all it takes. A very easy turkey done in 54 minutes. I'd say that's a good deal. So <laughs> Mr. Brown of course is our taste tester so that's the wing. What piece you got? The wing. One of my favorite pieces. You got rosemary on there? Not on it, but around it. I cooked it around it. I can taste a hint of rosemary. Is it that wing is really good. Is it juicy? Yes. But crispy on the outside? Crispy on the outside. I think you have a piece with the bone in it. <laughs> yeah, it does. Really good. Well, how about the breast? The now, this meat? is always the test. Yeah, because that's always the dry. I don't care much for breast <laughs> on the turkey, but our chicken. That's not dry at all. It's moist. I think it's from brining it. And you can use any kind of brine. You and know. actually, it's really tender. It is. Yeah. 
So juicy. Fifty four minutes is how long that cooked at four twenty five. Done. Over one hundred and sixty five degrees when I tempt it. So it passed the test again, huh? I like that better than I do four or five hours in the oven. Good. I like it a lot better. Okay. That's really good. There we go. Now it's my turn. Now it's your turn. So my little grandson's going, he's going to taste it too. <clears throat> Here, what you want it there? What do you think? It's a little juicy. Think it tastes juicy? Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Preston. So, guys, I hope you like this easy way of uh, getting a turkey in and out of the oven. And, like I said, 54 minutes between the dark meat and the white meat, it was all done. And the skin was really crispy, and it, it, the breast was really juicy. So I hope y'all liked this recipe. If you did, come back and see us. Give us a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't subscribed. And uh, we'll see you later. God bless.